too often that it gets larger because it will always be caught in between R and the full ring of integers of the field of fractions. So the number of times that you change the ring will be no more than something like the logarithm of the absolute value of the discriminant of R. But still, don't count on the ring not being there. Okay, so in this algorithm, at each stage, we will have an order A containing R that we keep track of and a collection, a finite set of, let's call it X, X is changing in the algorithm, a finite set X of uh, invertible A ideals that are properly contained in A. And what will always be unchanged during the algorithm, just as I always wanted that the AI was a power product of the X that I encounter, I always want that such a thing exists. The only thing that is lacking is the pairwise coprimality. Okay, now we have to start with the zeroth stage. So start with A, well, just as before, we really like to keep the same X as the input. But we cannot do that because we like the AI to be invertible in the X. So start with A to be the ring generated by the rings that you get by making all the AI invertible. So you apply this blow up algorithm from Tuesday and you do that for each of the ideals and you take the ring generated by them, which is at least R. So that is the beginning and then we are continuing as we do over here. Any questions so far? Okay. Oh, I forgot to say what my starting value for X is, but that is what you expect. Namely, you simply lift all these ideals to A, and you kick out any trivial ideals. In fact, it is easy to show that such an ideal can only be trivial if it was trivial in the first place, if it was equal to R itself. That follows from the integrality of A over R. Okay, and then we wonder whether we are done. So if all A and different from B in X are co-prime, well, then we terminate and the output is the current value for A together with the current value for X. And it is clear from what I said that those fit the bill. 
Okay, so now I copy the second line, otherwise you pick two different ideals in X for which D, which is equal to A plus B, the GCD of A and B, yeah, I am just computing the GCD now, for which uh, this ideal is different from capital A. And then what we would like to do is perform this step, divide A and B by D. But that requires D to be invertible. And that may not be the case, so we first make sure it is invertible. You compute the blow-up, let's call it B, that is the blow-up of D. And now if I replace all ideals in this case A and B, by the ideal they generate over capital B, then the GCD is invertible. So what we have to do now, this is going to be in a moment our new value for A. But we also have to update X, and the updating for X, that is the following, replace all C in X by the ideal they generate over B and C was invertible over A, the new ideal is invertible over B. And next we look at BA and BB and those we are going to kick out and replace them by the new stuff. So by, yes, say it again. Uh, so yeah, that is a pleasant thing. If you uh, go from um, an, an order to a bigger order, let's say in the same field of fractions, and you look at, uh, well, let's look, look at the fractional ideals, let's call it F. F is the set of fractional ideals. Then you have this map. And that sends an ideal to the ideal it generates. And this map uh, that respects several operations, in particular it respects, well, multiplication of ideals, it respects, as I mentioned, invertibility, but it also respects the plus. And those things are important in the correctness proofs and in the proofs of other statements that I will be making. But you have to be very careful to, with these things because there are other operations that are not preserved. And that is, for example, if you do the wrong sort of division, you have this sort of division, A divided by B, that may not be preserved. Avoid that operation. And if you cannot avoid it, then what you should do is instead of the ordinary division you take, you make an assumption on B, namely that it is invertible. Because invertibility is preserved, as I mentioned a moment ago, and also if I restrict to the invertible ideals, then I have a group homomorphism, so the inverses of invertible ideals are also preserved. So that is an important issue. If you keep changing rings, you do have to pay attention to what is happening to the ideals. Excellent question, thank you. So that means that I can now omit all proofs that I intended to be giving, thank you. So let's see, what am I saying? Oh yeah, so I do the same thing. I take BA and I divide it by BD, which I can do because that is now invertible. And here I have BD and there I have the BB divided by BD. 
You see that I write the D in the middle because that is sort of pleasant. That means that if I uh, that the elements that are co that are not neighboring uh, are sure to be co-prime. These two elements are co-prime, but these need not be co-prime, nor need these. So that is sort of one way of sort of keeping track of the data structure that tells you which ideals are already known to be co-prime. There is a much better way of doing this in the notes uh, where you keep track of a graph that carries this information. Okay, so that is my replacement there and of course and omit not only the duplicates but possible unit ideals that you may encounter. So that is oh not quite the uh, replace also a by b and go back to where we started our real work and that was over here. Okay, so that is the entire algorithm and that is a polynomial time algorithm and this polynomial time algorithm has the property that is formulated on this blackboard and there is something else to be said namely that the outcome is perfectly predictable. Let me um, let me give you a quick description of what your A is, and then for the X there is something similar as I mentioned before. So my C that will be replaced by the smallest set of ideals in R containing the input as well as R itself and closed under multiplication and GCDs. Then the output a is the ring generated by all, uh, let me think about this, all blow-ups of all elements of C, which is typically, in all interesting cases, an infinite set and which is just as pleasing as what I told you about the Z plus Z gamma ring, you only do a finite number of blow-ups in the course of the algorithm and you get an infinite number of blow-ups for free. Okay, there is, as before, a similar description of this X, which is also completely canonically determined by the input. Any questions? Okay, well, I thank you for your attention, and tomorrow I like to apply this material towards a proof of what I called Theorem 3 in my introductory lecture. I hope you to see you then. Thank you very much.